previously on Destiny. <laughs> Might just pull this scam off. And when the time comes, we'll finally be in the clear. Huh. Attention is required elsewhere. All right. Thanks for the memories, you lunatic. Anything else I can do for you? You're already doing it. Keep playing the game. Dark Matter, The Emissary, The Nine. Little light can be shed on the mysterious mass of celestial bodies. I could tell you of two queens and their methods to usurp the wisdom of the Nine and transcend reality itself. I could tell you of the Great Hunt and how the Nine willed the extinction of the remaining Ahamkara. Or I would tell you of the ghastly events seen by guardians on Venus, when the Ahamkara amassed in such great numbers that even the records of such an event aren't in proper order. Welcome back, guardians. My name is Samlab. Yes, I am back. Life has most certainly taken some unexpected turns lately. But in any case, it's time to dust off the old books and pick up from where we left off. Even behind the scenes, the Nine observe humanity lying in wait for the perfect moment. But for the first time in years, new opportunity bears fruit. And while there are many story beats to pick up on, this is the most important. An important question, for sure. Where are the Nine? The answer is simple. Everywhere. Many of you know the stories and some don't. The Nine are enigmatic entities that were brought to life by the ebb and flow of dark matter particles. These particles are not dust, no. In fact, they are composed of particles that do not absorb, reflect, or emit light. Till this day, NASA scientists still attempt to ascertain what dark matter particles are truly made of. After centuries moving and shifting, these shifting planetary orbits pulled and gave birth to dark matter with consciousness. This is how the Nine were born. A quick science lesson. It turns out that the universe is made up of roughly 68% dark energy, while dark matter makes up about 27%. The rest, everything on Earth, everything ever observed with all of NASA's instruments, are all normal matter, which adds up to 5% of the known universe. You could say that dark matter is everywhere, Based on these statistics, we can assume that the Nine exist everywhere, all at once. The law states they are dependent on life within the universe. Their desire is to escape this morbid existence and seed their own existence. Beyond that of the Sol system, this is odd. It would mean that the Nine could actually have intervened at any moment they chose. Just the idea of this fascinates me. Beings as powerful as they deliberately choosing to sit back and watch to see how everything plays out. Back during the season of the Risen, a very large research document was released by Ikora Ray 
and the Hidden Archives. The Hidden are a group of the Last City's Guardians, who work as deep infiltration scouts. They operate with some level of autonomy, except for falling under the leadership of Ikora Ray. Unofficially, they are a spy network that work for the Vanguard, investigating or keeping tabs on specific targets. So if you are ever out there in the wilds of destiny and sense someone lurking behind you, it's very likely to be a hidden agent. Maybe. Have a listen to this web law entry from the hidden dossier. It reads, We've had ships sweeping the edge of the system for orbiting singularities, but we don't know the mass of the distributary or Exodus Green's outward vector at the time the distributary formed. We don't even know if the distributary singularity inherited the Exodus Green's vector, leaving it on an escape trajectory into interstellar space, or if it emerges at rest with respect to the sun meaning it would fall directly towards the sun and pass through it over and over. Add the gravitational influence of the planet and it could be anywhere by now. We're looking for a microscopic point in the volume larger than the solar system. We thought about using fleets of sensor mites to search for the gravitational influence, but then we realized the nine are in competition with us to find the singularity and they would certainly use their phantom mass to interfere, unless it's been right in front of us all along, right in the sky of the Dreaming City. Could they have found a way to harness the singularity, to park it where they can guard it? If so, we must obtain this capability. Have you found anything we missed? Rumors within Destiny and its community have circulated quite possibly years that somehow the entrance to the distributary resides in the sky of the Dreaming City. But this rumor hasn't been proven yet. What is true is that Savathun, the Nine, the Taken and the Scorn have all been battling one another to gain access to the distributary. At this point in time, it is unclear whether Riven of a Thousand Voices was privy to the information pertaining to the whereabouts of the distributary, or whether Queen Marasov kept this secret hidden even from her. But since the curse on the Dreaming City, multiple parties have tried to gain access to it for their own benefit. Some, though subtle measures, and others not. The entry in the hidden dossier presents an interesting question that entities such as the Nine are in competition with us to find the singularity and use their phantom mass to interfere. The phrasing Ikora uses is interesting, and perhaps an interesting clue about how the Nine operate through dark matter, but we'll come back to that. Interestingly enough, for there is one other searching hungrily for such a space, the Witch Queen herself, Savathun. A mere of her name is enough to make anyone's hairs stand on their head. As I mentioned in other videos, her goal has always been very, very similar to the Nine's goal. To leave the game the same as the Drifter. To exist on another plane of existence as the Ahamkara do. Do you see the pattern that is starting to emerge here? Before I go any further, have a listen to this lore entry from the book Truth to Power, titled Thank You. From a random crypt, Savathun selected a young thrall and summoned it into the High Coven. It came hesitantly, fearing death, but nonetheless, it came. Come, come, snapped Savathun. Listen, as I reveal unto you my design, you are aware that gravity is the curvature of space-time, and where gravity is powerful, time itself slows. The thrall indicated that it understood, more or less for it was a singer of prayers, and not well fed with the fruit of the knowledge of physics. Now, I have tried to put an ascendant in orbit of a black hole while its spawn gather the tribute of an eon. But the worm is not satisfied, for it sees the trick. 
What I must do is amplify the speed of which tribute is gathered. A pocket world where time passes quickly would do well. Or a world where time is a Taurus and infinite violence might be gathered. With such a murder battery, I could become a being of supreme insight. The thrall indicated it was confused, but not lost. With this tribute, I shall undertake a mighty work. A real humdinger of a scheme. I'm going to refinance my entire existence. I'm going to move from an existential economy based on the accumulation of violence to an existential economy based on the accumulation of secrets and the tribute of failing to understand me. I shall name this tribute of failing to understand Embaru, for it shall be as formless as the mists. The thrall held up its claw, as if to say, please, slow down. Now, spoke Savathun's scheme mother. In the beginning, Yul said to me, Savathun, you may never abandon cunning. If you do, your worm shall devour you. Cunning is the use of thought to predict the function of a system. Therefore, wherever a being should attempt to understand me and fail, has my cunning not defeated theirs? Wherever a falsehood is repeated about me, have I not displayed cunning? I shall gather tribute from every false prediction, misguided theory, fearful rumor, and ominous supposition, which derives from the thought of me. And in time I shall pin my quiddity upon these rumors. I shall discorporate, so that I exist wherever my schemes and conspiracies also exist. And so, I will be immortal, as long as anyone seeks to understand me and fails. Do you see? The thrall demurred, saying that it did not know much of metaphysics. Good, said Savathun. It's a law of the High Coven that one's sinister plan should be incomprehensible to a thrall. Do you know why we've come here? If I am to take my tribute from the keeping of secrets, where else are secrets better kept than beneath the event horizon? My brother ruled the flat space of infinity, but I prefer these tide-washed depths. And in time, I shall make them my dominion. Ur, the Everhunger, heard this and was pleased. You've heard my name is Bife, Mylin Games, and me individually share our thoughts on the Truth to Power law book and how it cannot be trusted. Yet here I am referencing it once again. What if, by chance, there is an opportunity for us to observe her actual plan. As the law entry mentions, Embaru by Savathun's design is a construct of failing to understand. And this by nature perfectly describes every single lie, truth, interaction, or action taken by the first sister of the hive. Then what we just heard is Savathun's actual plan. Her real discoveries, not an algorithm or mystery or a book full of lies, but instead a deliberate sleight of hand, delivered through telling the truth. There is a reason why there is such said about Savathun in law, and the word of destiny in general. Have a listen to this next law extract from the entry. Thank you. Verse 154. I, five, the encrypted verse. Do you know that nothing in all the cosmos has read this verse? I encrypted it eons ago, and ever since it has gone undeciphered. At the moment you laid eyes upon it, I captured an entwined quantum state of your verse, your mind, and your ghost. 
that I used Curia to transmit that state back in time to the moment of encryption. You are your own one time pad, the key to the lock of understanding. Who am I? Call me Coyote. Call me Mantis. Serpent. Cod. Anasi. Call me Shri Cleanse His Brother's Stomach. Call me the Grand Master of Simosis. The Jeweler's Hammer which gilds the signal. A purposeful mob, none of whose members know its purpose. The infinite regress of enigmas. A self-questioning answer. The word not spoken. Black ice. Contract of minds. The ache and fever of overthought while bedridden with illness. The intolerable thorn of frustrated inquisition. Grey regret at the end of a fruitless day. The thing which is unlike your beloved, but arbitrarily recalls your beloved to agonizing effect. Architrave of the No Widow, needle driven in flush, with skin so that the desperate finger cannot pull it out. Sweet petal, unmemorable, crystal death, the probably improvable. I know your people well, and so I know all your names for me. But what is your name? I am, of course, especially interested in you. You saw me in the stone laid on your plotting table, and in the shining eyes of the Admiral at her dying helm. You hunted me between the lines of your texts. Wherever there was space to fit me in, there you found me. You created me, and gave me a part of your thoughts. And in presenting those thoughts to others, round the campfires and networks of your little world, you expanded that space. Here at the center, I lie to you the truth. You have everything you need to know it, but I will give you a clue. As the duelist gives warning before she draws, the answer you seek to the Dreaming City is simple, not complex. Thank you, sweet friend. You are a gift and a delight. You are more dear than my mother, for you have given birth to me a thousand times. Now, the fascinating part about this confirms what I said earlier. Savathun has told us lies and truth, and truth as lies. Herein lies the secret to her methods and part of how she has managed to lead us astray, or directly, where we need to be. What's fascinating about the previous season, though, is that Savathun led us all on, including Eris. In a sense, her plan was to replace Oryx by involving Eris Morn, a potential fourth sister, you could say. This is key, because by Eris exploring her true nature as part Hive, she intrinsically entered into the game, and is now a player. Godhood or not, there is more to that story, which Savathun has already alluded to, much of which we won't get to see until post-Final Shape. Unchecked and unbound machinations on a grand scale, Savathun's plans to walk so closely and yet so far are actually quite masterfully executed. One aspect of Savathun's puzzle is her fascination with the Dreaming City. It's already clear based on the bargain struck with the Worm God Yule why Savathun must use cunning. Though she is desperate to escape the tribute system, and in part, she was successful. An important element of how her plans work, though, is through cunning. It is, as you'll put it, the understanding of systems, as so far Savathun has taken action in order to secure the knowledge that she needs and to learn the secrets of different systems, hive logic, paracausality, black holes, and even the light. 
She has already mastered three of these spectrums. Some are long-lasting and others were merely simply calculated risks, necessary to give her the advantage in the game. Imagine a web of cunning, one so large every bend or interlocking line brings in a totality brand new element. Think of it like a multiverse and part of this time plan requires the Dreaming City. Have a listen to this next lore entry from the Book of Dust, titled Witch. Came now the Traveller and with it a strange hope, for the Traveler's Light had the power to cause without causation. If the Nine had the Light, they could seed their own minds, free themselves from the dependence on matter life. They could gain forces beyond gravity to structure themselves and so become more than wraiths of dark dust. They could enter the mad alien superworld of our chemical reality. So they turned to this new hope and were divided. Come to me, a voice calls to Lavinia. Although there is nowhere to go, nothing to be. Not even emptiness, but the absence of anything to be empty or full. Lavinia perceives without emotion that she now exists as a structure of dark dust. A sandstorm blowing against itself. Come, the voice calls. I am Nasi. You are not safe. Come with me. Not safe? No, of course she's not safe. Because there are factions among the Nine. One faction sent Zer and Orion to study Guardians and the Light. To seek the secret of effect without cause and to protect the source of that secret. The last source. Now that the Ahamkara are gone. Those five played at alchemy with the Kokitas Gates turning dark dust into energy and then into matter, but they could not unlock the secrets of our mad existence. They needed ambassadors, go-betweens. The other faction walks a different path, a path of folds and needles slipped through space-time itself, existential syzygies yielding new spaces, to be remade as the Nine Desire. They have tried to gather enough dark dust in one place to form a black hole and found it difficult. When the dark mass collapses in gravity's fist, the dust passes through itself and scatters. But difficult is not impossible, and there is far, far more dark matter in the universe than bright. They will find a way to make new worlds of it. They will end their dependence on life and on the light of guardians which the Falling Veil will soon snuff out forever. In passing, Lavinia sees the entire history of the Queen's interactions with the Nine, more than anyone suspected and more vital. She sees how one of the Nine blinded Guardians to Gaul's approach, risking everything, for Gaul would have destroyed the Sun, and the Nine with it, to learn how to steal the Light she sees how that one was punished. Come. Nasir calls urgently. Come with me, quickly, before- Something dark and hypodermic pierces the void beneath Lavinia and slurps her down, pulls her through the probiosis so tiny that it breaks her apart into streams of single particles. One after another, she is annihilated and reborn. Somewhere, some when, made of flesh again, shaking and dripping fierce sweat, mewling like a little baby. Her cheek presses against a warm wooden floor. There's a fireplace and a fire in it, and strong wind outside that sucks at the flames. The clever-looking old lady at the desk looks up. Ah, she says. Lavinia, you made it. What? Lavinia gasps. She smiles as if Lavinia's confusion is the sweetest greeting she's ever heard. Don't be afraid. You've come to exactly the right place. Where? Some place where you are appreciated. Where we can really use everything you've learned. The old lady pours a thin stream of tea into the cup of bone. Didn't I tell you you were lucky back when you were born? 
This wouldn't be the first time Lavinia Garcia Umtawil's name has been mentioned here in the channel. I have referenced her origins multiple times. For quick backstory, Lavinia was a young cryptarch of the last city, who regularly studied under tutelage of Raoul. During her time in the tower, she became obsessed with research into the extinction of the Ahamkara and the Nine. Soon after the last Ahamkara was slain, a strange creature showed up in the tower of the city named Zer, an ugly humanoid creature with an outline shaped like a human, but distorted and in place of a head and face with piercing yellow eyes. She surmised that Zer appeared immediately after the extinction of the Ahamkara and may have been sent by the Nine. Eventually, Lavinia would break several rules to lay hold of an Ahamkara bone and make several wishes. After being caught by Ikora Ray and being asked to stop, she was exiled from the last city to the wilds of Earth. She made her way to the Dreaming City, where she would eventually end up incarcerated. Shortly after that, in a last-ditch effort to escape, Lavinia fled through the Coquitas Gates, where she was completely unraveled made into dark matter. She would meet with the Nine, and they would tell her about their birth, all their actions since the Traveler arrived, and all their interactions with Queen Marasov and their internal factions. Later, the Emissary would attempt to warn Lavinia within the Nine space, but before she could, something would snatch her away. This old lady is believed to be Savathun, given that the entry is called the Witch. An unexplored aspect to this question is linked to Savathun. How does she know about the Night? The answer is quite fair. We know this because she captured Lavinia just when the Emissary was trying to warn her about the Night. What I find most interesting about this is after the trail runs off. We get no further information, no other lore entries discussing Lavinia, except from one final flavor text from Season of Arrivals. Have a listen to this flavor text titled Stuff of Darkness. Met Lavinia out there in the nothing. Now I wonder if she found what she was looking for. The Drifter now, according to the Ishtar Collective, this information is no longer accessible within game. The data has been deleted from the data source. This means that after Season of Arrivals ended, it was removed after everything was sunset. But the information still stands. Somewhere out in the black gulfs of space, Lavinia persists. There is no telling where she may become an emissary of the Nine, along with Orin, or where the Savathun has held her prisoner all this time. During Season of the Drifter, there was a seasonal bounty item called Invitations of the Nine. The last invitation sent Guardians to a certain destination where they had completed a specific strike and defeated enemies to collect samples. Once all objectives were successfully completed, players received access to a mystery and potentially an activity on the Gambit Director, where they had the opportunity to learn more about the Drifter, the Emissary, and more so the enigmatic entities known as the Nine. But this isn't the most interesting part. After the curse on the Dreaming City, during the third cycle, the Emissary of the Nine visited Queen Mara Sot and offered her information and a deal. Have a listen to their conversation. If that's so, I accept their terms. Move the asset into position beyond the grave of the First Fleet. And do remind them, I have shown more than enough patience. It was a friend once, a confidant. Now it is a shell. Avoid falling into schemes of the Nine. Like the curse on my people, their games never end. All 
all this, and we find ourselves at the whims of so many small minds. Leave now. My next audience does not find the presence of the Traveler's Chosen to be... respectful. Up until now, there hasn't been any indication as to what this asset could be. Anyone's guess or speculation is as good as mine. But after some careful consideration, a thought occurred to me. What if the asset Mara is referring to is the Kokitas Gate? It wouldn't be too far a stretch to consider. The emissary would tell Queen Mara about Lavinia entering into the Nine Realm. How Sabathun spirited her away to some unknown hypodermic location within the Nine Space, to gleaning everything she had learned about them and to make use of it, I don't know. With Ahamkara now back on the table, it would make sense for the Nine to suddenly turn their gaze towards Sol once again. The power vacuum yet to be left by the Witness and quite possibly the Traveller will present a number of issues. Once the Ahamkara whim, discover what their predecessors endured by the hands of Guardians and the Nine, it wouldn't be surprising if the aroma of revenge drifts close to their forked tongues. Also known as A113, or A-113, is a small space station dating back to the Golden Age in stationary orbit above Ceres, a dwarf planet in the middle of the asteroid belt between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Now, the purpose of this station is actually unknown. Most of the records confirming its existence were lost during the collapse. But what it does contain are keyholes connecting to other dimensions. Crota, the son of Oryx, captured the station after the collapse, in hopes of using the keyholes within for his own use, resulting in it becoming his throne world or similar spaces, driving any or all who entered them to madness or worse. The station now called A-113 was discovered by dead orbit, but kept secret from the tower. Another expedition failed when an awoken ship attacked their vessel, named Sophia. Exploration led to the discovery that the station drove most crew members insane. The crew's leader found a faded ghost on the station and returned it to the city, asking the dead orbit to erase records of the station. The awoken who attacked the Sophia then studied the station's keyholes. Kokitas, the station, was moved to orbit the sun after the reef wars and surrounded by armed forces ready to destroy it. When Crota was defeated by Guardians, it later fell into the possession of the Nine. Five of them took control of Kokitas and turned it into their laboratory, the goal of turning their dark matter into regular matter to produce living organisms. Though the Nine could create complex basic atoms, crystals and organic precursors, their two attempts to create viable life ultimately failed, and after a while, the portal fell silent. The Awoken somehow recorded each sending, still guarding the station, as they sent their own probes through the portal. Instantly, they ceased to exist, as if unwritten or converted into dark matter. A long time afterwards, Lavinia arrived at the Kokitas gates, seeking the Nine with reef security and military on her heels, with no other way to escape, she leaped through one of the Kikitas gates and was transmuted into dark matter, where she entered into commune with the Nine. Have a listen to this law entry called Kokitas. We are maintaining our containment posture at Kokitas. I assess no immediate danger to the system, and we have enough firepower to destroy the station and its mechanisms remotely if the on-site warheads fail. The station remains in the stable heliocentric orbit, 
where it was parked after the destruction of Ceres. I do not ask confirmation of these theories, and in fact I beg you not to address them, but I have reviewed the site's records, and the fate of Sophia's crew after they were herded to Kokitas stinks of hive madness. The Kokitas apertures must at the time have opened into a hive manifold associated with Crota. Whatever their original purpose, when Crota established his presence in the system, they became conduits into hell, and the Sophia's crew's ugly end proved it. Whoever drove the Sophia to its doom then installed the Kokitas instruments around the original Golden Age facility to study Crota's manifold. Crota is dead. His hold on these gates has passed. Now something else is trying to pass through into our world, but it is so alien, and its sendings so bafflingly malformed, that I fear this can only end in madness. The first visitors through the third gate at event time zero hundred hours were simple hydrogen atoms. Over the course of seventy-two hours, the emissions developed from diatomic hydrogen to nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, water, and simple organic molecules. At the 80-hour mark, we received our first macroscopic visitor, a pallet of thick black hydrocarbon tar. Until 82-34-15, the gate vomited tar containing increasingly complex monomers and polymers. The visitors then began to assume geometric form, a hail of cubes and hexagons, each built from molecular crystal of the same form as the whole. Several capsules or membranes of increasingly complex structure containing water or oil. These may have been cellular precursors. At 5024-311, a living organism appeared. Death was immediate. Remote dissection describes a spherical body, radius approximately one meter, surfaced in thick hydrocarbon tar. Deep, evenly spaced throats converged on a central cavity perhaps intended to serve as lung and stomach. The body exhibited undifferentiated tissue of primitive plant-like cells, capable of spasms to pump air or fluid and out of the throats, without enzymes to cauterize metabolism or internal structure to dispose of waste, the organism could not survive. Cell death occurred almost instantaneously throughout the mass. There were no provisions for self-repair or reproduction. At 690 2954 the gate emitted a tubular organism. From 90 seconds, an organism moved across the gate chamber by contracting and expanding, then expired. Remote dissection describes a two-meter-long body with a spinal cavity full of energy-rich carbohydrate fluid. The organism contractions forced this fluid through the capillary network, where simple cells catabolized and carbohydrates into energy to power further contractions. The buildup of heat and waste quickly denatured the enzymes required for metabolism, and the organism died. There were no provisions for self-repair or reproduction. The gate has remained inactive since, barring short emissions of molecules which may be experimental proteins. Remote drones have registered similar ambient molecules within the Hellmouth on Luna. Though we have been unable to identify their source, we will maintain the quarantine until otherwise instructed. The overwhelming impression I have is one of learning, of increasing sophistication in the synthesis and arrangement of matter. The atoms in these structures were isotopically pure and impossible to date, but I have the uncomfortable sense that even they were freshly made. Probes and instruments detached through the third gate do not return. Annihilation is apparently immediate so total that it seems to result from a fundamental failure of the ability to exist rather than any weapon or countermeasure. Yet something does exist on the far side, and it is trying to learn the rules of our world. 
from very first principles. I do not eagerly anticipate its next creation. Sensitive contents above, sniffed from reef datacoms. Sensitive. Quite simply, they are everywhere. If dark matter makes up 27% of the universe, then you can rest assured that the Nine have been watching all this time. It is puzzling, though, that if the Nine knew about the Witness and the Veil all along, that why not intervene? It does make me wonder if entities such as the Nine have power enough to destroy the remaining Ahamkara, then why run from the Falling Veil? A line from the law entry of the Witch that says, But difficult is not impossible. And there is far, far more dark matter in the universe than bright. They will find a way to make new worlds of it. They will end their dependence on life and on the light of guardians, which the falling veil will soon snuff out forever. It could be anything, but perhaps a time will arise where the veil itself will also collapse. Though it may not be right now, everything hangs in the balance. And as it would seem, the Nine are several paces ahead of us. They've seen the end and want to escape it. So figuring out where the Nine are exactly is as impossible as trying to count every star in the known universe. Nevertheless, here are some important story aspects yet to be answered. Savathun has learned about the Nine and is yet to use said information, she may even be trying to gain access to the Nine's realm herself. Number two, Marasolf has requested that the emissary relocate the asset. I can only assume that this asset is indeed the Kokita's Gate Station. Three, once the Ahamkara whim are of age, the Nine will return to make wishes and finally become more than dark matter. Four, the Hall. The Drifter still owns a piece of, what do we call it, Nine Space Rock. Jury's still out on that one, but it's a close link to the Nine at least. We've still got quite a few months left until Final Shape. The gap in time would be fantastic for additional seasons. I'm not holding my breath though, but anything is possible in Destiny. The Soul System is actually just one system within our galaxy. There are multiple, for instance, the Jovian system, belonging to the Nine, or the Saturnian system, full of planets we've never seen, and there is even more on the outer edge of our galaxy. There are a number of planets to pull from for fresh storylines and mysteries within our galaxy, and most especially beyond. For all the stories out there, none have the same level of writing prowess or thematic storytelling like Destiny. The Nine's attention is elsewhere. A thought like that by itself has enough room to imagine multiple scenarios of where what they could be doing to prepare for the end of the Soul System. Wherever there is darkness, the light of hope persists. Don't give up. But that's all I have for you. Thank you for watching and listening to this video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Let me know if you did with a like and subscribe. Click the bell and consider subscribing to find out when my next lore video goes live. Remember that no matter what you're facing at this moment in time, you can do all things. Stay safe and Godspeed.